seconds, chair. So I'll send you live now for you. Thanks, Ron. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's virtual meeting of Stratford on Avon District's Planning Committee. My name is Councillor Peter Richards, and I will be chairing the meeting this evening. We are fast approaching six o'clock on the 3rd of February 2021. Um, along with the rest of the UK, we will be uh, showing our remembrance uh, and thanks to Captain Sir Tom Moore for one minute. So if we could please just take one minute in remembrance and then we will start the meeting proper. Thanks. Members, uh, officers, thank you very much. That is one minute. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And members of the public, thank you for your patience as well. OK, before we start, um, some uh, housekeeping to run through very quickly. Just a quick note uh, as a reminder, as much as anything, that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded for publication on both Council's website and on YouTube. Members, you have been provided with a, uh, a code of etiquette for these virtual meetings in advance of tonight's meeting, just to reiterate a few of the salient points. Please, can you make sure your device is either charged or charging? Please, can you remember to mute your microphones when you are not speaking? Of course, you will need to remember to unmute them when you are speaking. Uh, if you would like to speak, please indicate your wish to do so in the chat bar and I will call upon you to do so at the appropriate time. If you have any other devices as well uh, alongside you, if you could please turn them to silent uh, so we don't get disturbed by them. That would be greatly appreciated. If for any reason you encounter any IT issues causing you to drop out of the meeting at any given time, uh, please make best endeavours to rejoin us. You will have been deemed to have left the meeting at the point at which you lose connection uh, should you not be able to rejoin and we will continue provided we remain corrupt. There are two numbers uh, in our meeting chat. Should you have any technical issues, please do call those and we will get you back in as soon as possible. Um, to confirm, uh, checks have been made to ensure that all members of the committee are in attendance and ha they have confirmed in the presence of the council's legal officer that they can see and hear proceedings and have read all of the appropriate documents. We also have a number of officers online with us tonight. So first of all, from uh, Democratic Services, we have Anne Banks from our legal uh, services. Uh, we have Mina Mack, our solicitor. And from planning in no particular order, we have Erin Weatherston, Ryan Heath, Louise Casey and Sarah McPherson. And our planning manager this evening is Richard Gardner. Richard, do you have a statement that you'd like to make at this point? Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, just to say that my role tonight is to provide impartial advice and to assist members in their decision taking. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you very much. OK, for public speakers, if I could please ask all members of the public who have registered to speak that when you do dial in and join us, if you could please follow on uh, along the meeting on your phones and to mute uh, or turn off any live streams. The live stream is slightly delayed and it does uh, cause some issues in terms of us yeah. hearing and understanding what you're trying to say. So please, if you could do that. Uh, when you speak, that would be great. You will also need to press star and six to unmute yourself, but I will remind you of that at the given time. Right, let's dive in. Item number one is apologies. Uh, Anne, do we have any apologies, please? Yes, Chairman, we've got apologies from councillors Adam, Crump and Hensher Seraphim. Fabulous, thank you very much. And disclosures of interests, please, members, please indicate in the chat if you have any. Um, I do have one for 
all of us, and you'll have to bear with me while I find the right number. This is for Whitehorse, so it is application 2002517FUL. I have had a series of emails, some from residents and one from CPRE. I understand that is the same for all of our members, so consider that um, a disclosure for all of us. Uh, we are here with open minds and we'll be making a decision based on facts as they're presented today. And um, Councillor Parry has a disclosure. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, everybody. Um, I've got a couple of disclosures I wanted to highlight. Um, first of all, Whitehorse Inn. Uh, like yourself, I've had various emails. I've also had emails and texts from the ward member. And I also wanted to highlight that as the portfolio holder for regulatory services, um, I have been involved to some extent on enforcement matters regarding this site. However, I come to the committee with an open mind and we're talking about a planning. We're looking at planning rather than enforcement in respect to this particular application. And I also wanted to um, highlight that I'll be standing down from the committee with regard to application 20 forward slash 02853 forward slash full in respect of Morton House and Wishing Well Cottage at Morton Moral, as I am the ward member and I have registered to speak. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Parry. Councillor Dixon, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, as the ward member, I am supporting the final application tonight, should we manage the time to get there, Chairman. Number 20 forward slash 0340410, uh, where I will be supporting the application. Uh, so no personal involvement at all, but I will be speaking on their behalf. Lovely, thank you very much. And Councillor Fleming, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's item five, the uh, 100 High Street, Bidford on Avon. Um, I'll have to sit that particular part out because uh, I was the planning chairman of the parish council that objected to this in the first instance. So from that perspective, I'll have to sit out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Fleming. Understood and duly noted. OK, um, there being no further disclosures registered. Um, minutes, is everyone happy for me to sign the minutes from our meeting the 6th of January? A quick wave and show of hands on uh, the screen would be great. That is unanimous, marvellous. We'll do that when we get to it. OK, um, we have a, a minor reshuffle, only a minor reshuffle of our running order for tonight. So um, application or sorry, item number eight, which is application 201131FUL paddocks um, in Mapleba Green. We have no registered speakers uh, for that item. So um, there is an updated recommendation in the update sheet, which is to delegate to two officers. I propose we move to do exactly that. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Parry, OK, um, uh, I will then seek for a vote. Councillor, I'll go first. Councillor Richards, uh, four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor Fleming, four. Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Councillor Curtis, four. Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon, four. Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, four. Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, four. Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, four. And Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry, four. Unanimous Chairman. Fabulous, thank you very much, Anne. So committee therefore resolves to delegate to officers application reference 201131FUL, the Paddocks, Birmingham Road, Mapplebrook Green. Fabulous, okay, let's get stuck into the main body of our meeting. Um, our first item is application 202612FUL, that is Green End Farm in Ships Non Star. Our presenting officer is Erin Weatherston. Erin, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Please may I check everyone can see the presentation on the screen. Certainly can. The application site lies to the eastern edge of Willington settlement, which is identified as an all other settlement within the council's adopted core strategy. The site is outlined in red on the plan and comprises of a parcel of paddock land, just shown here. Vehicular access to the site will be shared with a neighbouring property to the west, Green End Farm, which is located just here, and the access you can see coming down to the road to the south. 
Public right of way, SS117, crosses the access to the application site. The approximate location of the footpath is shown by the green dashed line following this route approximately here. Planning permission is sought for the erection of a single local market dwelling and associated works. This is a resubmission of planning application 1903338 FUL, which was considered by members of planning committee in February 2020 and refused for two reasons, including the principle of the development and the visual impact of the scheme. Key changes since the last application was considered includes the publication of a housing needs survey for the parish dated in August 2020. In addition, the plans have been amended slightly since the earlier scheme to introduce a fifth bedroom above the garage, which is facilitated through new roof lights and an external staircase. This slide shows an aerial image of the site with the approximate location of the paddock seen here close to the centre of the slide. Green End Farm is located to the west, just here, with the access down to the road. Neighbouring properties lie to the northwest of the site and open fields lie to the north and to the eastern edge. The land is relatively flat, which allows for views to be afforded from the public realm, from the road here and the public footpath that goes through the site. This slide shows a proposed site plan for the new dwelling. The property will have an L-shaped form and a detached garage, which is located to the west of the site close to the public right of way, which is shown by the green dash line on this plan. The proposal will include parking and turning areas, shown here on the drawing, and private garden land around the property. The existing paddock is enclosed by vegetation along the northern boundary and the, south and the southern boundary, and to the east is a post and rail fence close to the road. The access is shown just here, joining Green End Farms access to the public highway. Neighbouring properties lie to the northwest of the site and are shown on the drawing just here in blue. This slide shows a proposed floor plans and elevations of the new dwelling. The dwelling will be two storey in height, measuring approximately 8.8 .8 metres to the ridge on the main ridge line. The dwelling will be finished in natural stone and red brick under a slate roof with coin and capping details. Key design features include pitch roof, pitch roof dormer windows on the one and a half storey section shown here and here, chimneys and a canopy. The main architectural details will be facing the road to the east, so this elevation and to the south. Dwelling will have accommodation on the ground floor, so living accommodation, and at first floor, five bedrooms, including the fifth, just shown here above the garage. This slide shows a number of photographs taken from the east of the site. The top two images show Green End Farm just here and here and neighbouring properties to the northwest of the site located here and here. This is a paddock land and the arrow shows the approximate location of the new dwelling. The images along the bottom of the slide show the existing boundary treatment to the north of the paddock with the neighbouring properties you can see just here and the access Andrews Lane to the neighbouring properties located to the northwest of the site. This slide shows a number of photographs taken from the road from the south of the application site. The first here in the top left, you can see the access arrangements with Green End Farm and its outbuilding. The second image pans to the east, public right of way is approximately here, with the arrow showing the approximate location of the site and the existing screening to the south of the site with the neighbouring properties garage just here to the left of the image. The final image just on the bottom is panning to the east along the boundary, so you can see the road going across. And this image bottom right is looking back towards Green End Farm and the access, which you can see just here with the application site to the right of the image. This slide shows a number of photographs taken from the wider street scene. The top left image was taken looking in a southwestern direction from the road south of the site. So you can see Green End Farm just here to the right of the image. The top right image was taken looking north towards the site from the road. So you can see the approximate arrow here showing the application site behind this hedgerow. The bottom left image was taken looking from the road in the northeastern direction. And the application site lies to the left of the image, just over here. And the final photograph was taken from the road to the east of the application site looking in a southerly direction. So the paddock area is the extent, the post and rail fence of the wider paddock that then adjoins the road. And you can see neighbouring properties to the south of the site. There is one verbal update for this item, uh, which is that a further representation has been received from the Parish Council, which have confirmed that they're supporting the application. No new material planning reasons have been raised. 
It is recommended that planning permission be refused for the reasons set out in the officer report. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Aaron. Um, OK, we'll move to our first speaker, who is uh, Ms Cashmore and uh, Ms Bygate. Um, do we have our speakers here? You may need to press star and six to unmute yourselves. Hello, it's Sharon Bygate. Hello, good evening. Hello. Is it just yourself speaking this evening? And Jane Cashmore. Jane, hello, yeah, good evening. Myself. How are you splitting your time? Um, we're going to share the three minutes between us. So Sharon will be going first and then I'll follow on. OK, so you've got three minutes between you, the two of you. Um, what we'll do then, Jane, if it's all right with you, we'll give you a 30 second warning for three minutes is up. Um, and then if you stay on, obviously, for questions. Yeah, that's fine. I have some Perfect. submitted some slides to be shown whilst I speak. Can you confirm that you can see those, please? I can indeed see some slides, yeah. OK, so whenever you're ready, uh, please do go ahead. Good evening. Uh, some members may remember my planning application. It came before Committee A on the 19th of February last year. I attended and spoke at that meeting and carefully listened to councillors. Councillors voted against the application because there was no housing needs survey, but it was said that if a housing needs survey were carried out, I should resubmit the application. I went away and spoke with the parish meeting and with their permission, a housing needs survey was carried out. The survey evidences the need I propose in this application and the planning officer is now happy with the principle of the application. For those members who are not on Committee A, and as a reminder, as I'm sure you consider many applications, I've lived at Green End Farm in Willington since 2000. My husband passed away over five years ago and I'm left with three children to bring up on my own. They're 18, 16 and 14. My children and I love living in Willington and have strong links here but we now need to downsize and the existing house is too costly to maintain. My late husband was deeply passionate about the village and chair of the parish council for about 10 years. My parents live locally and so I can help care for them, including my father who has dementia. I'm proposing one dwelling for myself and for my three children on my adjacent paddock. I understand that my house would have a legal agreement to secure it for local people should I ever decide to move and I'm fully supportive of that. I'll now hand over to Jane. I just wanted to focus on the remaining objection which officers raise concerning visual impact on character of the area. This is a subjective view and not one which I share. The site is not Greenbelt, not conservation area, not special landscape area and not AOMB. On the screen are a number of photographs which show the character of the area. If the planning officer could show these as I continue to speak, please. You will note from the photographs that there are a number of houses within and on the edge of the village which provi provide very sim similar visual arrangement to that proposed in this application. You will see that there are clear public views of a number of properties set back from the highway. What is proposed is therefore not alien to what is experienced within the locality of the site. The site is set back approximately 50 metres from the road. It would also assimilate more readily in my view, given unlike the other nearby and adjacent examples, it does not have a long access track in its foreground. Instead, it shares access via Green End Farm and therefore keeps hard standing to a minimum. Moreover, as I've noted on the submitted photograph, the council can condition a hedgerow to be planted alongside the eastern site boundary. In summary, Mrs Bygate carefully listened to members in her last application and has so taken the steps mentioned. This is a good quality design to meet a local need, secured in perpetuity for local people, with parish and ward councillor support. No objections from neighbours and no objections from consultees. I hope you can support the application. Thank you. Marvellous. Thank you very much. OK, members, do we have any questions for our agent or the applicant? Please indicate in the chat if you do. Uh, councillor Parry first, please. Thank you and, and a good evening, uh, both of you. I can certainly remember this application well, um, having been part of um, the Planning Aid Committee last year. Um, this is really just, I think it's probably a question to Jane Cashmore. I notice in the officer's report, there is reference that the development would not form part of a continuous street scene. Um, I'd just be interested in your, um, if you could, exp in your views, um, because I couldn't see a, 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 a street scene on that and I just wondered, I'd, I'd just be interested, it might be the applicant's views on the street scene um, and where that street scene 
is meant to be if there was a street scene. I just wondered whether you might wish to comment on that. Yes, thank you, Councillor Parry. Um, through you, Chairman. In my view, the village is quite organic um, and it's not particular, particularly linear in, in this part of, of, of the settlement. Um, so in terms of a particular street scene, I don't personally consider that one exists. Um, and I think looking at the photos which I submitted, what we're proposing in terms of the setback and the views is very similar to what can be seen in the character of the area. OK, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Dixon next, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, that particular slide which we've now got on, I think it's photo number six, which I think indicates more or less a two and a half storey property by the looks of things. From what I can see. Um, which one is that on the, uh, by, by name? I can't, uh, is that Green End Farm? Um, that property is, if you go back to the slide one, it, you can see um, images six, so it's, it's to the south east um, of the application site. That's the one. Now, which one's, uh, and the plan? Please, Erin. Number six, I'm with you, so it's down there and we're looking at that one. Thank you very much. OK, uh, I don't see any more questions for um, our agent or, applica uh, or applicant. So uh, thank you both very much for your time this evening. You're probably best served to continue watching on the live stream. But thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. OK, let's uh, now hear from our ward member, Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor O'Donnell, are you there? I am indeed, Chair. Thank you. Good evening. You know the drill. You have five minutes. Stay around for some questions afterwards. We'll give you a 30 second warning. Whenever you're ready, please start. Thank you. Um, good evening, committee. Since the previous application, I can confirm that a housing needs survey has been carried out by Warwickshire Rural Community Council, covering Barchester and Wellington Parish. This was carried out in July 2020 and identified a need for one four or five bed house. Mrs Bygate has kept both myself and the parish meeting up to date with her planning application proposal and I can confirm that no locals have contacted me with any concerns. Our council's core strategy allows scope for local market dwellings within or adjacent settlements in the district where there is an identified need under policy CS15 and AS10. The application site lies adjacent to the settlement in proximity to other residential properties, has the support of the parish meeting and provides for a four bed house with a potential fifth bedroom or office over the garage. The proposal therefore meets the need identified in the housing needs survey. The officer report sets out that the principle of development is now acceptable. The officer's only reason for objection relates to encroachment into the countryside and officers consider visual harm would result. I would ask members of committee to consider the following as to why the proposal does not harm the character of the area. The planner suggests the design, size and height is a substantial development. However, its size reflects the need identified in the housing needs survey. The height of the property is not excessive at a maximum of approximately 8.8 .8 metres. Its massing is also broken up by lower side projections. In a previous application on the site, that planning officer set out in his committee report that should the principle of development be acceptable as part of a reserved matters application, the layout, scale, height, massing and design of the properties would be required to reflect the appearance of the neighbouring dwellings within the immediate vicinity. If you look at the immediate vicinity and the recent development at Andrews Lane, I feel the proposed house does just that and is in keeping with the locality. The materials are sensitive and it is an attractive design. Policy allows for local market dwellings within or adjacent settlements. They often will be on paddock or agricultural land. The site for the proposed dwelling is well related to Green End Farm and nearby recently built dwellings at Andrews Lane. The planning officer considered the locality of the site to be open land to the northeast and south. However, as you've seen from the photographs presented, the dwelling would be seen in the context of the other properties. When viewed from the road to the east, Greenend Farm lies behind and Andrews Lane properties to the side. 
Being a rural village, the area is characterised by a number of substantial and or prominent properties on its fringes. I'd fully expect a full soft landscaping scheme to be a planning condition, and this can secure appropriate landscaping within the site, including a boundary hedgerow to define the garden. The proposed dwelling is set approximately 50 metres back from the road and a large expanse of grassland would remain to its front. This is representative of the locality. The access is shared with Greenland Farm and the proposed parking and hard standing has been sited to the north so would not be visually dominant in wider views. I therefore think the proposed dwelling is appropriately sited, is of scale and size to meet the identified need, is well designed and is sympathetic to the locality of the site and landscape character, complying with policies CS5 and CS9. The officer report reviews other relevant matters and concludes no harm would arise. This applicant has done all you as a committee have asked her. This is her third time at committee. I ask you to look favourably on this application and grant permission. Thank you for your time. Councillor Donald, thank you very much. Members, do we have any questions for our ward member, please? If you could indicate in the chat if you do. I'll give you a couple of seconds. No one seems to be moving. Looks like there are no questions. Councillor Donald, thank you very much. Do please do stay on while we uh, continue to deliberate. OK, members, we now have uh, any questions that you might have for our officer. Do you have any points for clarification? Councillor Jennings first, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I just wanted to make sure there is no specific guidance or guidelines on sizes, specific sizes. It's just purely down to us as members of the committee as to for us to decide what we regard as substantial or oversized. So in terms of the assessment, CS9 is a policy we would look to and it looks at existing built form. It is a matter of an assessment. So in this case, officers consider it is substantial in size and that's where the harm's coming from. But members may weigh it up differently in terms of looking at the context of the site. Thank you very much. Lovely. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any other points for clarification. So let's move into our debate. Who would like to kick us off? Councillor Parry. Right, hello, good evening, Chair. Um, obviously, this is a very comprehensive um, application and um, maybe I have the benefit of some other members having um, heard this uh, previous applications by the applicant. Um, I think there is, there are some key things here. Obviously, it's got strong parish meeting support. There are no objections at all from members of the village. Um, I was interested to note the uh, comment from uh, the applicant's agent on uh, the view of the continuous street scene, because I have I've been wrestling with that, looking at the maps that we we've been given, because I couldn't see a continuous street scene in 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 Willington, and I do know the village quite well. Um, I think also, you know, local needs is very much has to reflect uh, someone who's 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 lived in the village for a long time. So we have quite clearly we have parish council support. We have ward member support. This is the third time this uh, applicant has brought forward an application for us. Um, and I can remember quite clearly at the on the last occasion we did recommend a local housing needs survey be undertaken, which has been un undertaken and identifies a need for four or five bedrooms. Um, I don't believe there is this street scene which um, is highlighted in the report, um, and that's not a criticism of the officers at all. Um, but I think, you know, on balance, it is a finely balanced application, and I wish to propose we support um, granting um, this particular application because there's been uh, exceptional detail done um, and I think where we have a small village where we have parish council support we have ward member support we have absolutely no objection from anybody who lives in the village um, yes the property is of a fairly large size but so are most of the other properties in Willington um, 
and therefore um, I'm I'm very happy on this occasion to support um, and go against the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. OK, uh, we have a few more speakers as well. So Councillor Jennings first, please. No, thank you, Chairman. I think Councillor Perry virtually said exactly what I what I was about to say. Um, a five bedroom house is going to be substantial. So it will look substantial. Um, they've, they've had the housing needs survey. I mean, all I'm doing is just repeating it. Um, I'm ha very happy to second second this that we, we grant. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Lovely. Thank you very much. Councillor Mills, next, please. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Yes, um, I, I mean, it, it is a substantial house. Um, I, I do know that um, area. Um, I have taken a look. I mean, it is going on quite a large plot of land, so I, I think it could fit in quite nicely. And uh, as everybody else said, there are no objections uh, from ward member or the parish council. So um, I'd be inclined to support the, um, uh, well, unfortunately, go against the office recommendation on this, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Lovely, thank you very much. Councillor Dixon said he wants to second the proposal. That has already been done, but Councillor Dixon, if you want to speak, now's your chance. Do you have to? No, no need to, Chairman. Matt Jennings Matt. Uh, beat me to it. Lovely stuff, thank you. Councillor Curtis, finally, um, please. Yeah, I feel slightly ambivalent about this, I must admit. And I was just, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chair. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not muted. Sorry, I thought it was. Um, with regard to the parish support and no objections i'm trying to just recall from a recent meeting an applicant who wanted to build as i recall an extension in their garden to replace a static caravan it seems i mean in some respects it is different but on on in that instance i recall that committee did turn that application down despite support from local community. And I, I just feel slightly uneasy that we're not being necessarily consistent. In so uh, I'm, I'm going to start there, Councillor Curtis, because we, we want to debate the item that's in front of us, not one that's yeah. already been decided upon. And whilst I agree with a consistent approach, um, many members here don't have the benefit of your memory, clearly, and, uh, and won't know the details of that particular item. The fact that it has a caravan involved shows me it's dramatically different from what we're looking at now. So I wouldn't like to draw comparison in that sense. Um, I think we have, um, you know, Councillor Dixon has oh. put something in the chat that you can read. I'm not going to read that out now. It's not rude, <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> rude. Uh, but there we are. Um, OK, uh, right. There's no one else has indicated they wish to talk or speak. So we have a proposer. It has been seconded. I'm comfortable with the reasonings that have been put forward to go against the officer's recommendation. Uh, Richard, are you comfortable as with what you've heard? And um, we can move to a vote. Um, yes. Can I just clarify the, the re reasons, Chairman? Um, because it seems to me that there's two ways that the design issue, the visual issue could fall away. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it's been said that that previous refusal had a visual reason in there from a previous committee. Um, so the two ways are the first way is that the applicants now gone and done a housing needs survey and that because there's a housing need met that tips the balance in favour of the development even though the visual harm remains. It doesn't sound like that's what committee are talking about. What it seems to me they're talking about is that actually there's no harm anyway and there's no need to tip any balance. The visual harm's fallen away. Is, is that a fair assessment? I think it is but I'm going to ask Councillor Parry as the proposer to come back. Councillor Parry. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. My views are that now that we have a local housing needs survey, it, it identifies certainly the, the need uh, and therefore, um, particularly with the parish council support, um, I, I feel this is more in line with the AS10 countryside and villages application. And whilst whilst the development is is large because of the housing needs survey, I do feel it tips the balance. And I don't, I also um, would like to point out or highlight that I don't feel that there is a street, there isn't a comparative street scene in the village anyway. And, and that was a concern in the report because it's the way the village is um, developed, there is not the, there's a whole range of different character properties which are 
all very different and some are very large and I and I don't see I think it fits in very well and I I do not see the harm of caused by the size or the height of the the house so but it's, to, to me it's the housing needs survey that swings the balance of it because it is a housing needs um application thank you Anne. Richard is that are you, you're satisfied with that answer yeah, I, I'm taking that that, that, that you, no members consider there's visual harm there that, um, you yeah. don't need to tip the balance because there isn't visual harm in the first place. Correct. OK, do we need to talk about conditions? I believe it will be subject to 106 anyway, but do we need to talk about conditions? I would I would like to see um, obviously um, EV points put in and consideration to um, ecological bird boxes or anything like that. And the applicant did mention a landscape as a, a soft landscaping scheme of um, I think hedges round the border of 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 the property, so um, obviously subject to officers' approval. Okay, good. Um, officers, do you need to add anything at this point? Standard uh, other conditions, I'm assuming. Are you happy to delegate all of the standard conditions yeah. to officers? Or okay, rather than do yeah. headlines, we'll, we'll absolutely. Delegate them all. Okay, lovely. Good, I think we've got everything covered. Um, I'll just double check with uh, Mina as our solicitor. Mina, are you satisfied we can move to a vote now? I am indeed, that sounds good. Marvellous, we'll do just that in that case. Um, so the proposal is to grant, as has been set out uh, by our members. I will go first, Councillor Richards, four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor Fleming, four. Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Councillor Curtis, four. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon, four. Thank you, Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, four. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, four. <coughs> Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, four. And Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry, four. Unanimous, Chairman. Fabulous, thank you very much. Um, our members, uh, so committee therefore resolves to grant application 2002612 FUL Green and Farm uh, Wellington in Shipston on South for the reasons given. Fabulous, let's move to our next item, which is application 2001612 Vary, that is 100 High Street, Bidford on Avon. Our presenting officer is Ryan O'Keefe. Ryan, are you there? I'm, I'm here, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good man. Let me there hear. we are, you're on my screen now. OK, so um, whenever you're ready, over to you. Perfect. Can everyone see my presentation? We certainly can. Brilliant. Uh, the application in front of us is at 100 High Street in Bidford-on-Avon, just outside the main centre. It's a variation of the original uh, planning approval 18 slash 0 FUL. The proposed change is in regards to the window uh, on the approved and now built two storey uh, extension to the dwelling. The variation is looking to allow a top open fan light um, to this window. The original approval conditioned that all windows were obscure glazed and fixed shut. The application site borders number one and number two chapel close. Number two you can see here and this is looking to the left hand side of number one which is a bit more clear here. This is obviously the window in question. At the time of the application being submitted, they were looking to retain both this window uh, to be openable as well as this window here, which uh, we assessed as being unsupportable uh, owing to the positioning and neighbour amenity. So it's just this window on the top left hand side we are looking to uh, keep as an openable window. Uh, this is the window fully open and that is the end of the presentation. 
Fabulous, Ryan. Thank you very much for that. Um, we will move straight to our first speaker, who is Councillor Taylor from Bidford and Avon Parish Council. Councillor Taylor, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, if you press star six to unmute yourself, and then hopefully we can hear you. Hello, yes. Hello, we can hear you. Fabulous. Good, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> no, no problem at all. So, uh, Councillor Taylor, you, you've got three minutes. We'll give you a 30 second warning, um, but whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. Well, thank you very much. Good, e good evening, Chairman and Councillors. Um, in the report on the original application for the two-storey uh, extension of 100 High Street, as you just heard, the case officer at that time uh, actually said there is a concern regarding loss of privacy, and I'm quoting, however, the proposed side door window has been amended to be obscure, glazed and non-opening. Planning permission was granted on the basis of this amendment. However, when the extension was built, the wrong window, an opening one, was installed, as you could see from the photographs. Instead of putting this right, the applicant has sought a planning variation to allow an opening window that, based on the original considerations, would clearly mean a loss of privacy to neighbours in Chapel Close. Um, after Council had objected to this variation in August 2020, as well as a revised variation in October 2020, it was approached by the planning officer requesting us to reconsider our objection because the officer had agreed this comp compromise with the applicant. Through the clerk, council advised that its standing orders prevented it from reconsidering a decision within a period of six months, unless there was a material difference. Another application was sent for consideration in November 2020, and again the parish council objected on the grounds of loss of privacy. So this variation was considered three times in total by the parish council, August, October and November 2020. Councillors who visited the site individually have concluded that having a dormer window with an open fan light would clearly be a loss of privacy for the neighbour in number one chapel close, as it directly overlooks the small garden. As you could see from the plan, if you could see in the plans, the dormer is only one of three windows in that room. The other two are opening windows, one facing the property's own rear garden and one facing the front. So the need for an open window is, is uh, quest uh, questionable. We strongly believe that the opening window, whether or not it's kept shut by the current owner, in addition to an opening fan light, do not guarantee privacy for the directly overlooked neighbour. Our concern is not just for the use by current occupants of both properties, but, 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 but the way it's used by future occupants. We'd also like to add that the applicant did not attend any of the parish council meetings where the application was discussed, whereas the neighbour concerned neighbour in Chapel Close did. In view of the above, council trust, the parish council trusts that this committee will agree that the window currently in place should be replaced by an obscure non-opening window as agreed in the original permission, as the window that has been incorrectly installed will result, result in a clear loss of privacy for the neighbouring property. Thank you very much. Councillor Taylor, thank you very much indeed. Uh, if you can just bear with me and I'll see if members have any questions for you. Members, could you indicate in the chat if you have any questions, please? I'll give you a few seconds to do that. See if you're shaking heads. <coughs> Looks like that's a no. So Councillor Taylor, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. You're probably best uh, placed to continue to watch the live stream from now on, right. but thank you yeah. very much for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. OK, we'll move to our next speaker, who is Miss Marie Huddy. Are you there, Miss Huddy? You may need to press star and six to unmute yourself. We'll give you a couple of seconds to be able to do that. And hopefully we'll hear from you. Hello, yes, good evening, Chairman. Can you hear good. me? Good evening, we can indeed, loud and clear. So you have three minutes as well, and we will give you a 30 second warning before your time is up. Um, whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. Uh, good evening, Chairman and Councillors. The original 2018 decision required the dormer window in the side elevation to be both obscure glass and non-opening. This rendered objection unnecessary. The dormer window installed is not compliant with this decision. The window overlooks the whole rear of my property. This adversely affects in particular the two main reception rooms, one bedroom, two patios and the whole of the garden. The pre-application advice stated the window does not have clear lines of sight to neighbouring property. This is incorrect and contradictory to the original decision. There does not appear to be any plans which show the relation between the dormer window itself and the rear of my property. The distance between the rear wall of my property to the shared fence 
is 10.5 metres. The driveway of 100 High Street is between the side wall and the fence and is approximately 2.5 metres wide. The total distance of 13 metres differs to the 15 metres as mentioned in the committee report. The plans for 100 High Street show three windows in the bedroom. Both the front and rear wall windows are clear glazed with fully opening windows. The dormer window in the side elevation was planned to provide additional light only. As there are already two windows in place, there is ample ventilation and airflow to the room and another opening window is not necessary. With opening windows, including fan lights, everything can be seen and heard, whether it is a small aperture or not. From fan lights in my property, I can clearly see from three open sides. The view can be directly below the window or much further in the distance, especially from the first floor. The impact on my property is to cause significant loss of privacy and being overlooked as demonstrated by photos submitted. May I respectfully request that Stratford District Council to uphold the permissions with conditions from the original decision that the dormer window is both obscure glazed and non-opening. Thank you for listening. Marvellous. Thank you very much, Ms. Holly. Uh, members, do you have any questions for our objector, please, for our residents? No, I see lots of shaking heads. No questions at all. OK, in that case, uh, Ms. Holly, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. You're, again, best place to continue to watch the live stream from now on. Uh, so if you want to hang up your phone, but thank you very much again for your contribution. Thank you. Cheers. Good evening. OK, um, we will then move to our next speaker, who is Mr. David uh, Fell. David Fell, who is our applicant. Uh, Mr. Fell, are you there? Can you hear me? You may need to press star six to unmute your phone. Hello. Hello, good evening and welcome. Um, so you've uh, got a fair idea of how things run. You actually get six minutes this evening. Um, feel right, free to okay. use as much or as little as those six minutes as you like. Uh, we will give you a 30 second warning nonetheless. And um, whenever you're ready, do please feel free to start. OK. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me uh, allowing the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, I would like to just explain how this is all came about. Uh, firstly, we instructed an architect, obviously, to design our extension. Uh, and we went with the design that he proposed. Halfway through the planning submission process, uh, the company ceased trading. By this time, we had the plans approved, but we had no as-built drawings to issue our builder. Uh, we then had to uh, instruct a second architect to complete the drawings. Uh, that we needed to issue to the builder. And this is where the the, the, the fixed window problem, uh, where it actually got missed uh, between the two architects' draw, sets of drawings. A builder was issued with a set of uh, drawings showing, uh, showing an opening window, which is what he ordered and he then installed. I tried to explain the, the error to our neighbour to try and find a compromise, but unfortunately she wasn't prepared to listen. Uh, I then explained, uh, explained that the glazer told me uh, that they normally screw up the openers uh, and then glaze the windows so that, uh, so that the screws, uh, to prevent access to the screws, and this is common practice in the glazing, glazing trade. Unfortunately, she insisted on the frame being taken out and replaced with an unopening type. As the windows supplied and fitted cost, just short, cost me just short of a thousand pounds, I didn't want to go down the route of just scrapping a perfectly good window frame. So I looked into Stratford District Council's guidance on side, side to rear facing windows, and then we realised that we met all of the criteria uh, to, to have the window as, a, as an opener. So I sought advice from Stratford Planning Department, who advised me to put a variation of conditioning, which is what we've done. Uh, we, we do feel that the Parish Council has taken a biased opinion on, on this matter as we've invited them on more than one occasion to come round and view our property. Uh, we never received any replies from them uh, confirming whether they would or they wouldn't. We, we then received an email to say uh, that our case was uh, closed and it would not be revisited for six months, which is, which is something our case officer had never heard of before. I was then asked a few weeks later by the Parish Council to why I now need an opening window when we already have windows that open in the same room. I explained, due to the nature of, of the construction of the dormer window, it, it acted like a mini greenhouse and it created a pocket of hot air during the summer months 
and being able to open uh, open a smaller opener would cure this problem. Hence the reason we've we've asked for a, a small op- a small opening fan light. Uh, and also the cost implications involved in scrapping a perfectly good window frame, which I thought was two valid uh, valid reasons. Uh, I, I feel the parish council have distorted my explanation. Uh, they 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 replied back by saying that it was fitted in error and it now appears that because it is quite large in size it acts like a mini greenhouse suggesting that the window is larger than shown on the drawings which is not the case the size of the window has not changed as you will see from the original drawings which which was approved the only difference being that the openers the window was fitted with openers by mistake uh, I find it disappointing that the parish council have passed judgment on the window, considering that, they are, that, as far as I'm aware, they've never been out and they've never viewed it from inside my property or, or from my boundary. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm afraid I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, members, do we have any questions for our applicants? Councillor Parry has one. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair, and uh, good evening, sir. I just wonder, this might be a technical question for the officers, but I just wonder whether you can advise what height the top fan light is from the floor. In other words, from, if you were standing the, in front of the, if you was in, standing in front of this window, how from the ground upwards, I would just find it helpful to know what height are, fan, are we talking? Are we talking? Is. Are we talking from the ground floor, or, or as in standing from on the bedroom no, floor? No, when you're standing inside the the, the room. All oh, right. Okay. Well, I actually take. Uh, I did take some measurements of this, and I supplied them to Ryan o uh, O'Keefe. Uh, the measurements of the tape measure. It was just short of one point eight meters, just under six foot. So it's just under six foot. Yeah. To the. It's, it's actually it's actually above my head. For me to look out of it, I would, I would have to stand on the stool. Thank you very much. Mr. Farr, I've got a question for you, if I may. When you, uh, let's say we were minded to grant this evening and you were to fix the uh, the right hand pane as you're looking out of the window, how are you going to do that? I think you alluded to removing the glazing and then screwing in the frame and then reglazing. Is that right? Uh, well, basically, that's the, the glazer told me that was a common practice. What they do is they just basically remove the double glaze units. Uh, they then fix it with with screws and also silicon uh, on the on the inside of the uh, unit, so it can't be reopened. Uh, then basically put the glass in and re basically reheat it all back up. And that's what you'd be doing in this instance. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't personally be doing it. I'd get the glazer. It's good. The glazer's got two more windows to fit at the front of the property, so I'd just get it while he was there uh, to actually do that because I wouldn't I'd probably <laughs> break the glass. I, I didn't mean you personally, I meant you as a, but there we are, well done. Oh, all right, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're welcome to do it yourself, of course, but okay, thank you very much for that. It looks like we've got thank no you. more questions from our members. So, Mr. Fell, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. Again, if you want to uh, continue to watch on the live stream, you're probably the best place to do that, but thank you okay, again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye. Right. Um, OK, um, our final speaker for this item is Councillor Pemberton, who has been sat patiently waiting. Councillor Pemberton, um, welcome. Good you're evening, no Chairman. My, you're no longer on my screen, but I'm sure you will be momentarily. Um, so, Councillor Pemberton, you know the uh, the drill. Five minutes, we'll give you a 30 second warning. Uh, use as much or a little time as you like. Whenever you're ready, over to you. Thank you very much, Chairman, members of the committee. Um, members, this application was originally uh, heard uh, sorry, was originally considered back in 2018. At the time the application was made, the case officer identified that there was a balance of harm in relation to the neighbour's amenity by the, propo the original proposal for the opening windows on the extension. The officer quite correctly sought to narrow the issues through negotiation and compromise and in so doing came up with a solution with a fixed window solution that addressed the applicant's needs, met planning policy and also took account of the neighbouring amenity for Mrs Hulley. And on that basis, uh, as the neighbour, Mrs Hulley and the parish council um, were in a position where they felt they were happy to remove their objections. Um, the applicant has made an application to vary 
and the officer in this case, Ryan O'Keefe, has quite legitimately come to a different professional assessment of the balance of harm in terms of the loss of the neighbour's amenity by the top opening fan light being uh, permissioned. Um, members, you are faced with two conflicting professional planner opinions on the basis of the balance of harm to the neighbour's amenity. I would ask members and I would suggest to members that it is entirely legitimate for members of this committee to have regard to both planning officers views and recommendations, but to actually come down on the side of the original officers recommendation where planning permission was granted with a fixed window solution. That seems to me to have struck the correct balance between the needs of the applicant and the needs of the objector in terms of the impacts on their amenity. Um, it is for members to actually come to a decision between two professional opinions. Um, I would ask and the parish council would ask and the objector would ask that you can, there is no additional new planning reason to move from the original decision. I respect the officer's uh, assessment of the, the, the circumstances now, but I do believe that this is a matter where you can legitimately uh, accept that the original case officer's assessment was correct and that the planning permission that was granted under a delegated decision was correct and that you should uh, support that original assessment and balance of harm. Thank you very much. Councillor Plumpton, thank you very much indeed. Members, could you indicate in the chat if you have any questions for Councillor Plumpton? Please, I'll give you a couple of seconds. There's not much movement. Uh, Councillor Plumpton, looks like no questions for you, but thank, thank you, you very, very much, much Chair. Evening. Thank you. OK, let's move to uh, points of clarification for officers. Could you please indicate members in the chat if you have point for clarification? We'll give you a couple of seconds to do that. Councillor Parry's first in there. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. I would just be interested to know, obviously the applicant has highlighted that the fan light window is about 1.8 metres from the ground, so it's like six foot. So um, they would, someone would need to be standing on a stall. Can we have some confirmation as the, uh, from the officers, please, on the, uh, uh, measurement between the floor of this particular room to the fan light. In addition, it would be interesting to know what the um, aperture is of this fan light and therefore if someone, I just would like to get a bit more of a feel uh, on the privacy side of things as to if that fan light window was open and the, the, the occupant decided to stand on a stool to see the angle of the, of the fan light, how much of the neighbour's uh, garden would they be able to see? Ryan, you are muted at the moment, just FYI. Thank you. Um, just going to share my screen. Um, I've just found the email from the applicant with the confirmation of the measurements. Just bear with me a second. Um, so this was taken by the applicant. Um, and as he stated, it's around 1.8 to the top of, well, to the bottom of the fan lights from floor level and obviously wider shot of him measuring Just... and a person that context from floor level um, in that room That answer your question, Councillor Perry. I think I've seen some thumbs up there, so I think we're good to move forward. OK, thank you very much, both of you. Uh, Councillor Jennings's question, please. Yeah, 
Councillor Parry seems to be doing very good on her mind reading tonight because she's once again asked a question which I was going to ask. But uh, I know I'm presuming, obviously, from that photo, you've got to be at least six foot two to then look downwards. Because even if you are over one, no, if you're six foot two and you're looking straight forward, all you're going to see is the same height. So therefore, to be able to look into the room, you're going to have to be at six four or say standing on a substantial chair, I presume. All on your tippy toes. I think we could take from yeah. the, uh, the measurement that we've seen. It's 183 to the base of that. So you'll need to be over the top of that to be able to see it. Um, well, Councillor Dixon has, has a question, please. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Brian, um, I know it's not a skylight in the roof slope as such, but my understanding from an architect I was working with is if a skylight was fitted that was 1.7 metres from the floor, it would not need planning permission being 1.7. I just wonder if that is a true. If so, whether it has that a bearing on tonight's considerations. If, if, do you want me to come back on that one, Ryan? Please do, Richard, if you're ready to go. Yeah, um, uh, uh, I, I couldn't comment on whether a window on its own would, would need permission. I'd have to have a look at the case. But the important thing to remember is this window is part of a larger development that needed permission. It was looked at holistically and this is varying that original permission for an extension, which is why we're considering it today. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Mills next, please. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, Ryan, um, I think there is a photograph um, of that opening light, isn't there? You know, it, it's fully open. Can you can you put that up, please? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's okay. that soup. That that's good enough for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Marvellous. I can see no one else has indicated a uh, question for our officers. So we will move into the debate. Who would like to kick us off? Don't all jump at once. I can see oh, Councillor yeah. Jennings typing. So I'm going to assume Councillor Jennings will start us off. There he is. Councillor Jennings, please. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I know I can I can see it from both sides and I can I'm, I'm really struggling with the harm here. It seems to be very high this window and I do people stand on chairs to peer in, try and peer into their neighbours gardens. I don't know, possibly, possibly not. Um, how much harm it makes again I'm I'm struggling with it. To go against the officer's decision here, I'd have I'd have to come, I'd have to have quite a good reason, I think, or any reason. I'm sort of struggling to to go against the officer's um, assessment here. Um, so I'll throw it out into to everyone else for their comments. Marvellous. Thank you very much, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Parry is next on the list, please. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think, I mean, at the heart of this, there's an element of principle, isn't there? When you, you know, you you have an application, it gets permission, and then you suddenly find out that it's not being built how it was meant to be built. Um, I thought the applicant made a very good presentation, but I think what we have to remember here is that if this application came forward with obscuring and fixed windows, as they are with just an aperture opening for the fan light, um, there would be no objection to it. And I think, you know, from a planning perspective, um, the the distance between this particular the, the, the this particular property and the nearest property, you know, it is within the current restrictions. So whilst I think it's unfortunate from the objector's point of view, that the applicant actually was trying to do the right thing. There were situations where the builder um, sadly went into administration. The wrong type of window was um, installed. He then did the right thing by contact the planning, planning department, who then said, you need to submit um, a deed of variation. 
and we have what we have in front of us. And if we looked at this as an application that came forward from day one, we would not be in a situation to be objecting to it because of the height of the fan light. Um, and it is not normal behaviour for someone to stand on a stool. And therefore, um, you know, if we were to go against the officer's recommendation, this would go to to appeal um, because the uh, uh, and we wouldn't have a leg to stand on, I don't believe, but I'm not I'm not here to make suggestions. But I think um, we have to go with the officer's recommendation, so um, I'm happy to support. Um, and I, I sympathise with the ob 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 objector, but it we are where we are. And as if, if this came forward as a new application, I don't believe we would be objecting to it because of the, the fixed windows um, and it's only the fan light that can open. Councillor Brown, thank you very much. Is that a formal proposal? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Dixon, next, please. In that case, Chairman, I will simply uh, second that proposal. I can't see an issue with this one at all. Uh, as Councillor Perry says, people who don't stand on stools and chairs in order to look out of fan lights. Lovely, thank you. Councillor Mills, next please. Yeah, I think I've said it all, yes. Um, thank you very much. Even, thank you very much. Councillor Eden. I have a slightly different take, but I don't think I'm going to win this argument. So uh, uh, just because people don't normally stand on top of chairs or on their tiptoes to look out of a window doesn't mean to say they wouldn't. So therefore, I'm kind of more siding with the original recommendation from the original officer, but I, I think I'm on a losing streak here, so I'll uh, pipe down. No need to pipe down. You're more than entitled to uh, to give your view. Um, Councillor Curtis has indicated a wish to speak now. So Councillor Curtis. Um, yes, he was really just picking up Councillor Pendleton's comment. I mean, I feel very ambivalent about this, um, I, um, but there's no, Councillor Pemberton said there's no additional new planning reason to allow this. And I don't know, it it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't sit easy with me. I think, uh, yeah, that, just that really, that, that if there's no new planning reason to allow, it seems strange to, to permit now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Curtis. Um, OK, uh, I, we have a proposal. It has been seconded. Before we move to that, I just want to check uh, with uh, our officers that we're satisfied that um, the any conditions that we've put on, I think we've, there's only, uh, it looks like there's only two, um, uh, in, will ensure that that window is screwed shut and will remain screwed shut and that we will check and ensure that it is enforced upon um, how are we going to go about doing that? Or is it, does that just happen as a matter of course? I don't mind who answers, Ryan or Richard. Um, ordinarily, we don't check, we don't have a compliance function, um, but it is a matter for enforcement. And I'm sure if it wasn't done, we'd soon hear about it for, from anyone who had a concern uh, and therefore it'd be a matter for enforcement. Okay. That's good enough for me. OK, in that case, um, we have a proposal to grant in line with the officer's recommendation. It has been seconded. Let's move to a vote. I will go first. Councillor Richards, four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor I'm, I'm excluded from voting. He is, yeah. Sorry, yes. Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Uh, Councillor Curtis abstain. Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon for. Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden against. Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings for. Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills for. Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry for. Mm -hmm. Six, four, one abstention, one against, Chair. Marvellous, thank you very much. In that case, committee resolves to grant application 201612 very in line with the officer's recommendation. OK, let's move to our next item, uh, which is application 202517FUL. That is the White Horse Inn, Bambury Road in Ettington. Our presenting officer is Louise Casey. Thank you, Chair. 
Louise, over to you, wherever you, you are. Chairman. Good evening, members. I'm just going to uh, share my screen, if you bear with me. Can I just check that everybody can see that? Certainly can. Lovely, OK. So the application now before members seeks part retrospective planning permission for the construction of four new dwellings in the village of Ettington. The development originally had consent to convert the former Whitehorse pub building on the site for residential use, but this building was unlawfully demolished during the construction phase. As a result of this, the original planning permission was deemed to have been lost and the applicant invited to submit a new planning application in order to regularise the works. The current application was therefore submitted for consideration. The site is outlined here in red. It's located within the Felden Partners Special Landscape Area and there are a number of public footpaths surrounding the site, which is just shown by the green dashed lines. And here we can see an aerial view of the site uh, in context to the surrounding village, site outlined in red again. And moving on to the site layout plan, on the left is the proposed site layout plan uh, and on the right is the layout which was previously approved but is no longer extant. So now I'll turn in some images of the application site, starting with some views from the Bambury Road. Um, unit one to the front of the site has already been constructed, along with the front boundary walls and parking area, as you can see in these photos. We can also see in the bottom photo number 50 Bambury Road, which is set back within the site, which formerly adjoined the White Horse pub. And here are some photos from within the site. So we've got top left image showing what remains of the White Horse pub structure. Top middle image shows the exposed party wall of number 50 Boundary Road. Top right is unit one at the front of the site again. Bottom left is the newly constructed detached garage building. Um, bottom in the middle, we've got unit five, which has largely been constructed at the rear of the site. Uh, and finally, bottom right is the existing cottage building where unit four is to be positioned. So the top photo in this slide shows the former Whitehorse pub building as it existed in 2016 um, and beneath we can see the proposed front elevation of the new building which is to be constructed in its place. So since submission of the application, officers have worked to try and negotiate amendments to the scheme. We've got the top image on this slide showing the front elevation of Unit 3 as it was originally submitted. And in the bottom image, we can show we, we can see the amended proposed elevation following negotiations to try and improve the scheme. So to conclude, the application site is considered to fall within the fiscal confines of Ettington is therefore acceptable in principle. Site specific issues regarding access, parking, design and maintaining neighbours and meeting levels are all considered acceptable. Chairman, it's therefore recommended that plan information is granted as set out within the report and there are no updates. Louise, thank you very much uh, for that. And we will move straight to our first speaker, who is Councillor Ruth Hawksford from Ettington Parish Council. Uh, Councillor Hawksford, if you could press star on six to unmute your uh, phone, and then hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Good. Oh, we had you briefly for a moment there, and you might have muted again by mistake. So if... No, no, it told me I was unmuted. Can you hear ah. me now? I certainly can. Wonderful stuff. So, uh, Councillor Hawksford, you've got three minutes. We'll give you a 30 second warning before your time is up. Otherwise, if you want to start, uh, feel free to do so. Thank you. Good evening. The case officer states, one, following an investigation by the Council's enforcement team in early 2020, the 2016 planning permission was deemed to have been lost due to the unlawful works, most notably the substantial demolition of the White Horse pub that had been granted for conversion. Two, the orientation of the footprint is different along with some elements of the dwelling's design. The most noticeable difference is the window design, which is a, was approved to have stone lintels, but now features brick sills and arching detail. Three, substandard width of the garages. These statements highlight points where approved plans have blatantly been ignored and changed by the developer without following due process. The officer's report also states, though the parish council and a number of third parties consider that the front facade of the new building should be restored to its former appearance in order to avoid harm to the street scene, there is no adopted policy that would require this of the development." End of quote. The planning permission of 2016 was given with the view that it assured the facade of the building would be preserved. 
Plans submitted and subsequently approved by planning are legal documents. Why is a policy required? How can a planning authority allow a building that has been illegally demolished to then be rebuilt to the developer's preferred specification? The elderly occupants of number 50 Banbury Road are at their wits end as this has now been ongoing since 2016. The side of their house is now into its second winter covered by black plastic due to illegal demolition of the attached Whitehorse building. Planning have a duty of care, if not a safeguarding duty, to ensure that the well-being of an elderly couple is taken into account with this development. We would request that the committee find a way to ensure that number 50 is made weathertight as soon as possible by rebuilding the gable wall. The demolished white horse should be reinstated to reflect the approved conversion. What conditions can be applied to any approval to ensure compliance? We would like to stress to the committee, if it were not for the distress being caused to some of our parishioners and the carbuncle to our lovely village, a much stronger objection would be being lodged. Our opinion is that this applicant has only considered planning law when it is to their advantage and otherwise ignored and abused. We would respectfully request that SDC, thereby you as its elected representatives, have a duty of care not only to this elderly couple, but to planning process, both now and in future, to ensure that any further approvals are not abused and ask that your most important decision this evening is how you will enforce planning law to ensure it is not disregarded in future. Thank you for listening. Councillor Hawkesworth, thank you very much for your presentation. Members, do we have any questions for our councillor, please? Please indicate in the chat if you do. I see very little movement. Yeah, a couple more seconds. Councillor Mills has a question, please. Councillor Mills. Uh, good evening, Councillor. Um, have there been any consultations? I, I'm, I'm not sure so I've misheard you, but has there been any, any consultation be, between you and the planners at all? Or developers, I should say? Um, the applicant, right from word go, um, in 2016, has never approached the parish council or come to any of our meetings. Um, no. if, an, if anything, he... Um, it, it, well, I'm not going to say any more than that because obviously it's it's previous, but no, he's never made any attempt to discuss anything with us. And and you have and you have invited that, have you? We've always we've um, the the process with the planning for the parish council is is that we always invite anyone to come and talk about their um, applications, and we Super. do. Most people do come and talk to us. Yes. Super. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, thank you very much. Um, no one else has indicated their desire to ask you a question, Councillor, so um, it leaves uh, me to say thank you for your contribution. Your best place to continue to watch the live stream so you can hang up your uh, your phone now, but thank you again. Thank you. No problem. OK, we'll move to our ward member, who is Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor O'Donnell, welcome back. Five minutes, 30 seconds. Whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening again, Committee. Committee, we are seeking solutions by bringing this application before you. As you've heard from Councillor Hawksford, the timeline thus far regarding this development is a tragic reflection of the gaping holes and lack of joined up legislation between our planning and enforcement framework. It is a toothless system when dealing with developers who flout the rules. You know, a small detail away from plans, whilst not ideal, can emerge out of necessity. But this amount of retrospective changes has led, has led to irreversible damage to the historic fabric of Ettington and its street scene. Now, Ettington isn't a Shipston or an Ilmington with numerous beautiful historical buildings. And the White Horse, 170 years old, held many valued memories for locals as both a pub and a community garden for village activities. You will note it was a registered community asset in 2015. Locals understood the need to convert to residential, and this could have been done simply and sensitively once planning permission had been granted, but not with this developer who has flouted planning in this fashion and most importantly and tragically impacted so negatively on the lives of an elderly couple who are suffering every single minute that this nonsense continues. 
Who on this committee would accept black plastic sheeting as the exterior to your home, your retirement home that you've worked so hard to provide for your golden years? Who'd be happy with that outer covering for your home because a careless developer demolished the building your home was attached to and has not since put it right? You will have seen the photo I emailed. I mean, who would that find who would find that satisfactory and who, more importantly, would allow that conti to continue if it was your home or your parents' home? I suggest it simply is not good enough. The demolition of the White Horse Inn did not conform to, was not permitted by, and certainly is not recognised as lawful. To date, this um, developer has yet to engage with either the parish council, the ward member or the neighbours. And I question how moving forward we can make the best of what is an unacceptable situation. It flies in the face of the NPPF paragraph 16 regarding front loading engagement. CS5 isn't even on the radar as he continues and has continued to negatively impact upon the character and history of Ettington. And finally, it most certainly in its present state and with the developer's ability to improvise rather than follow plans to the letter is not respecting CS9. It is a nuisance site that has rumbled on since before my time as a ward member. And I question why the parish council's request to rebuild the pub to its former appearance using salvage materials cannot be actioned as a minimum. And I would strongly urge you committee to refer to the need for strong conditions around anything you grant tonight. Because either way, the elderly neighbours need this nightmare to end. Lockdown as a pensioner is isolating enough, but this situation is downright cruel. And we as a society and you as a committee and we as an establishment are better than that. I want to thank Louise Casey for her time today regarding conditions. And I'd ask you to look at NPPF paragraph 55, where it states that whilst planning conditions should be kept to a minimum, they should only be imposed when necessary. I suggest they are relevant to planning. I suggest they are and enforceable, precise and reasonable. Again, I suggest they are. Committee, you have within your gift the ability to grant the elderly and vulnerable neighbours the chance to dream and to hope that their home will be restored to its pre-development state, that they can continue with their lives. You have within your gift the ability to control this application with conditions to ensure this disrespect for our planning teams and enforcement officers does not continue. And you have within your gift the ability to reinstate the street scene for the wonderful community of Ettington. Thank you for listening. Councillor Donald, thank you very much. Members, do we have any questions? We do indeed. Councillor Parry, first up, please. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Councillor O'Donnell. I just wondered whether I'm just struggling with the objection that you're raising, because on one hand you're saying, and I, I, I just would, I would ask for clarification. Are you objecting to this to this um, application that would obviously um, ensure that this black sheeting or whatever is against uh, adjacent to the properties of this? Um, the elderly couple that would be resolved or can you just just clarify exactly what you're objecting to on this application because if you're objecting to the this application then obviously the 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 awful situation which um your residents are suffering from will will continue as is i would just like if you could just give some clarification on that thank you Absolutely, Councillor Parry, and that was the reason that I contacted you earlier today. It's that I'm urging you because we need something to happen. We need the development to continue. I'm urging you as a committee to condition beyond condition on this developer because he is flouting the rules at the moment. Now you fall between two, two, two stools. You have the planning law and then you have enforcement. And I do think that this this cannot carry on because he's applied and then he flouts the rules. And so we do need the um, current situation to be made good for the vulnerable neighbours. I don't see why it cannot be rebuilt to appease um, the, the residents of Ettington so that the facade looks as it was before with salvaged. I think that's the minimum that should be done for the, the nightmare that's been going on and on. So it's a tricky, this is why I say I'm coming before you for solutions. I'm not saying please refuse because something has to happen on that site. It cannot carry on. But I'm just forewarning and saying you have within your gift to condition 
to really condition this application. And I'm just suggesting that the parish council's recommendation that the facade should be reinstated is, is a minimum request really. So it is an odd one because I'm not opposing, but I'm saying, can you please condition as strongly as you can within your gift as committee members? And also then we need to flag up to enforcement that basically they need to be camped outside this until it's completed because it has gone on and on. So that's the reason I brought it to committee is that I'm seeking solutions and advice from you as a committee as how can we okay. prevent this getting worse? I, I think we've answered that question. You, you do, of course, understand that we, we can only make a decision on what's put in front of us now. Yeah. We can't change things and, and come up with solutions. Um, Councillor Dixon next, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor O'Donnell, um, what would be your opinion if in our following your request and we conditioned that the uh, old pub was reinstated with the facade, which is your minimum requirement, would you anticipate that the builder might actually appeal that condition and delay any further work on this site by 12 months? Councillor Dixon, with this developer, I couldn't possibly answer because he hasn't gone along any any logical form thus far. So I, I wouldn't want to put my myself in in that position and I certainly wouldn't want to make things worse. I can see the the scenario you're suggesting that might happen there. Um, I just I think this is this is very tricky. I understand you can only find on what's in front of you, but um, I do think it's two parts, isn't it? We, the community want that facade reinstated, but we also need to consider we have these elderly residents who are currently being unnecessarily impacted in this way. So there is a risk if you say no to this and ask them to come back and adapt, then yes, there could be the delay. Okay. I don't know. He's not Councillor Jennings next, please. Um, once again, Councillor Parry asked exactly what I was going to ask, so I won't waste anyone's time. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Um, I can see no one else uh, wishing to ask our ward member any further questions. So uh, thank you very much, Councillor O'Donnell. You're free to continue to watch from the comfort of your home and we will uh, deliberate now. Uh, members, any questions for our officer uh, before we move to the debate? Anything for clarification? Indicate in the chat if you do. I see nothing and no one seems to be moving. So let's move to debate. Who wants to kick off the debate? Anyone like to start us off? Please indicate in the chat if anyone would like to start us off. No one is jumping at that, so it looks like it's going to have to. Oh, there we go. Councillor Parry, first of all, please. Councillor Parry. Well, actually, sorry, Chair, whether there's some delay on the chat, but I've got some questions for the for the for the officers, really. Um, OK. Yeah, Sorry, I did, I did put that in um, and I think there might be some delay in, in the chat function. Um, I would just like some clarification in terms of what what conditions can we. What conditions can we place if we were minded to grant this to ensure that um, greater scrutiny was given and, you know, taking on board some of Councillor O'Donnell's um, concerns together with the Parish Council. And I'm very mindful conditions have to be enforceable and reasonable in terms of um, planning policy. OK, Louise, are you able to help us with that? She may, uh, she did get cut off a minute ago. It may have happened again. So if, if I can just come back on that one then, Mr. Chairman. Please um, do. I think on page 36 of your agenda, the two, the, you'll see there's 15 conditions recommended. The two key conditions, I think, in answer to your question, are one and two. Um, that's approved plans and the materials as per those approved plans. The approved plans set out the parameters, they're to scale, they know exactly what they've got to build and they're enforceable. Uh, the materials as per the plans mean that the materials have to be agreed and they have to be appropriate um, and as, as are proposed on those plans. And it's those two um, that give the key level of enforceability for what you see in front of you tonight. If members were to grant it, that is how they can expect to see what is proposed built. OK, 
Thank you very much, Councillor Parry. Does that answer your question? And did you have a follow up? It 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 does answer my question because that's exactly what I thought was right. the situation that we have no other further powers to you know basically keep a watch on on what's going on because obviously anything approved this evening has a um, three years um, timeline to be developed anyway. Okay. Um, now, uh, members, um, I'm going to have to apologise because there's evidently there's a, a delay on my broadband. I've just suddenly had a barrage of can I speak question and yes. Yeah. So if I've missed you, I apologise. I also only have two or three videos, so obviously it's a broadband issue. What I'm going to do is go through the speakers list and say uh, and ask if you have a question for the officer or if you're indicating your desire to be in the debate. If it's for the officer, go ahead. If it's for debate, we'll save it and then we'll come back to you. So first of all, Councillor Mills, did you have a question for our officer? No, it's OK. It's been answered. Thank you very much. Marvellous. Councillor Dixon, did you have a question for our officer? No, it was to start debate. OK, Councillor Jennings, did you have a question for our officer? It's been answered. Thank you. Lovely. And Councillor Curtis, was yours a question for our officer? No debate. Thank you, Chair. Marvellous. In that case, Councillor Dixon, if you could please begin uh, the debate for us. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I don't think this uh, pub was a listed building at any time. I don't re re remember re reading that anywhere in the report. And therefore, if an application had not been originally submitted for its conversion, uh, the owners could no doubt have demolished it without any permission, is my understanding, of ownership of property. Um, that obviously would have been uh, very uh, objectionable, but on the other hand, it would not have been illegal, I don't think. So essentially, whilst it might have been nice to have the facade returned, uh, I think to condition that such uh, would only potentially delay the development of this site. And knowing that those uh, elderly residents are in the property with, as it were, limited weatherproofing to their party wall, um, I am indeed am supportive of this application, uh, but I won't uh, propose it at this stage. I shall await to hear what other members have to say. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Jenning, uh, sorry, Councillor Curtis was next on the list. Uh, Councillor Curtis. Yes. Um, just think, going back to the um, imposition of conditions, my concern is that, yes, they may be they may be enforceable in theory, but I think the committee needs to be mindful that although they can be enforced, enforcement action isn't always taken. It's not a statutory requirement. And I think there have been a number of instance, incidences, well, I'm sure we all have experienced, where we have expected enforcement to take place and it hasn't done. So I think we need to be mindful that although we may impose those conditions, it may not actually mean to come to anything. Thanks, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Curtis. So clearly, we're setting the conditions in order for us to be able to enforce on them. Uh, it's incumbent on uh, on the complainant and or the ward member to make sure those are followed through properly. I would leave it at that, I think. Um, OK, Councillor Jennings, next, please. Yeah, then, as far as the facade of the, the building goes, um, whether it's stone or brick lintels, I, I don't think so it's not a listed building. It's not something which we can really impose here. I think the most important thing is that we get this, that we grant and get this building work done as quickly as possible so that this elderly couple um, can get back to some form of normality. If we, if we, we want to impose as many conditions as we can, but they have to be reasonable. If we start imposing unreasonable conditions, it will simply go to appeal and you know we're then three months six months down the line it goes goes backwards and forwards and that this building is not built and uh, this couple are suffering further so i think we really just need to get put as many sensible conditions on this as we can um, and try and get them if we could condition that with they started on this building um on the pub immediately um as the the first part of their next bit of the build, well, that would be great. But if we can't, you know, we just got to get it going. So I'd like to um, propose that we we grant planning on this. Thank you very much, Councillor Jennings. Uh, Councillor Mills next, please. 
Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I'm. I, this is not too far from where I live, and I used to visit the pub. Um, but this is an absolute. It's been a mess for such a long time. It looks hideous. I feel so sorry for the people. I can't see them. Um, I, I would like to see it um, uh, reconstructed. As I mean, they, at the moment, uh, there's the original part still standing. Only, it, albeit small part. I can't see them actually. Um, putting the original brick up. I can't see it happening, but it's something's got to happen. I propose, yes, with Matt, that we get this moving um, as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Kendall has indicated his desire to second. Councillor Kendall, do you want to speak to that before I ask our last two speakers in? No, oh, everything's been said. Just happy to second. Good man. Thank you very much. Councillor Eden has indicated to speak. Councillor Eden. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, much along the lines of uh, Councillor Jennings and Dixon. Um, I won't ramble on. So, yeah, happy to go with that. Thank you very much. Councillor Parry, last speaker. Uh, just to confirm, I agree with the former speakers um, and will be in support of this application. Charlie, good. OK, we've had a proposal uh, to grant in line with the officer's recommendation. It has been seconded by Councillor Kendall. Uh, we will move to a vote. I will go first. Councillor Richards, four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor Fleming, four. Thank you, Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Councillor Curtis, four. Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon, four. Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, four. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, four. Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, four. And Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry, four. Unanimous Chairman. Marvellous, thank you very much, Anne. So, committee therefore resolves to grant application 202517FUL, uh, the White Horse Inn and Banbury Road, Ettington, in line with the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, let's move to our next item, which is application 202853FUL, as Morton House and Wishingwell Cottage in Morton Moral, Warwick. Our presenting officer is Louise Casey. Um, have we, has Louise managed to get back? In with I'm us. back in now. I'm sorry, I, it dropped out yeah. when Councillor Councillor O'Donnell was talking, and then I had other issues. But it, it seems to be working okay now, so fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed. We had a few glitches here while you were out as well, but everything's running now. So, um, if you uh, if you're ready, whenever you're ready, please, if you want to uh, bring up the uh, the item and and go ahead. Yeah, of course. Can I just check that you can see the PowerPoint presentation? Certainly can. Lovely, okay. So, the application now before members is seeking planning permission for the construction of a three bed self build local market dwelling. The application site is situated within the village of Morton Morrill, a category four local service village. Here, the, the site is outlined in red. It comprises garden land associated with the grade two listed Morton House. And the site is also located in the Felden Parkland Special Landscape Area and the Village Conservation Area, as well as the setting of a number of listed buildings, which are shown in red. So the slide here shows an aerial image of the site and it's just been put in to help illustrate the surrounding village context. Moving on to the plans, uh, this slide shows the existing site layout plan as well as the proposed site layout plan. Uh, and it's also uh, of note that in order to facilitate the access to the new dwelling, um, the existing garage to Wishing Well Cottage is proposed to be demolished with a new garage to be constructed for that dwelling within the application site. So here we've got the proposed floor plans of the dwelling, which would be two storeys in height with a basement area. And here are the proposed east and west elevations. So front and rear, and here we've got the north and south elevations. And moving on now to a 3D perspective image, which shows the rear elevation of the dwelling that are faced out towards the west. You can see the proposed new access um, beyond that too. And now turn to some images of the application site. The top two images shows views in both directions along the main road. Bottom left image shows the garage of Wishingwell Cottage, which is to be demolished. 
Um, and then in the bottom right image, we've got Morton House. And then in this next slide, uh, we've got some photos from within the site. Um, images on the left show the existing tennis court, which is in situ, and images on the right show the open grounds of Morton House. So to conclude, the proposal has been found to cause harm to the conservation area and the setting of a number of listed buildings with insufficient public benefit identified to outweigh this harm. In addition, the proposal would cause harm to the character and appearance of the wider landscape and special landscape area. So Chairman, it's therefore recommended that planning permission is refused for the reasons set out within the report. In terms of updates, um, a further representation has been received today by a third party raising ecology concerns. County Ecology have been made aware of these concerns and have responded to advice that their consultation response and recommended condition remains valid. It was, however, noted that the precautionary working method um, set out in the ecology appraisal should be updated to address the removal of the boundary wall. And that's it for the presentation. Marvellous, Louise. Thank you very much indeed. OK, we'll move to our first speaker, who is David McGee. Uh, I'm listed under as an objector. Mr. McGee, if you're there, could you press start and six to unmute your phone yes, and hopefully hello, we'll be able to hear you. Me? Can indeed. Hello, okay, good, good evening. And and do you have access to the photos I submitted? Um, I do not myself. Um, I'm, I'm just bringing them up now, Chairman. Thank you very much, Louise. We will have them on our screen momentarily. I will let you know when we have. While, uh, while Louise is bringing those up, just to let you know, you'll have three minutes. We'll give you a 30 second warning. And if you can stay online afterwards, see if we, uh, if we have any questions from our members. We do now have all photos up in front of us on the screen. So whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. OK, good. Um, we've lived at, lived at Glencoe Cottage, the Grade 2 listed building directly adjacent to the proposed development for the last 20 years. The new building is less than 15 metres from our house and runs the entire length of our garden. It will impact both our security and privacy and we will have to endure noise and light spill. The development would cause great harm to the character and appearance of the conservation area, the multiple heritage buildings to which it is adjacent and its wildlife. Indeed, the development site is home to protected bats, great crested newts and seven endangered, endangered bird species. The ecology report states that there are no recorded sightings of great crested newts, when in fact there have been multiple confirmed recordings within a few metres of the site. The development is out of keeping with the historic grain and pattern of growth of Morton Morrill. To grant the application would set a precedent not only for backland garden development within conservation areas, but would also encourage the misuse of local needs and self-build to override planning policies designed to protect heritage assets and special landscapes. The protection and enhancement are a key part of the vision that the core strategy promotes. The proportion and design of the proposed development are completely out of character with its surroundings. The five properties adjacent to the development are all Grade 2 listed buildings, and the proposed building is nearly 10 times larger than any of its eight nearest neighbours. The design of it, the building itself resembles a commercial building rather than a building of character and elegance that is required for this location. The extensive building works require the removal of 1,500 tonnes of soil from the site. It will pass within inches of Wishingwell Cottage, which has no foundations and has the potential to cause irrever irreversible damage. We also have concerns relating to fire safety. The access does not comply with fire regulations and also highway safety. For a previous nearby planning application, the Highways Authority raised an objection noting the proximity to the primary school, stating vehicles would have the nose forward between parked cars, which is of detriment to highway safety, and vehicles delivering building materials could block the narrow road. I conclude by quoting the comments of our ward councillor who states, the character and distinctiveness of the village would be compromised by the establishment of a backland dwelling. The principle of backland development should not be considered as acceptable. Those comments relate to a recent planning application in Wellsbourne, not in the conservation area and with no listed buildings nearby. That application has just been refused. We just ask for consistency in decision making and consideration for our future peace, security and privacy. Marvellous, Mr McGee, thank you very much for that. Members, do we have any questions for our objector? If you'd indicate in the chat if you do. 
We'll give it a couple of seconds just in case it glitches again. I can't see much movement, so it looks like we are not going to have any questions. Uh, Mr. McGee, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. If you uh, want to hang up your phone, you will be best placed to continue watching the live stream uh, on your computer. But thank you again thank for your you. contribution. Thank you very much. Good evening. OK, our next speaker then is uh, our agent, Jane Cashmore, again. And uh, we have our heritage or a heritage consultant, Emily Taylor, on the line. Uh, Ms. Cashmore, Ms. Taylor, can you hear me? Yes, good evening again. Good evening. That's Jane, I assume. Yes, it is. Marvellous. Um, is Emily with you or will she be dialing in separately? She is dialing in separately, hopefully. Hopefully. OK, in that case, uh, Miss Taylor, if you can hear me, if you press star and six, you should unmute your phone and hopefully we'll be able to hear you. Good evening. Can you confirm you can hear me? Is that it? Is that Miss Taylor? Yes, that's correct. Can you hear me? Certainly can. Fabulous. We've got you both. Wonderful stuff. Um, I'm going to assume you're going to split your time in a similar way to an earlier application uh, with uh, Miss Taylor first, then Miss Cashmore. So we will just give you a 30 second warning before the three minutes is up. Is that OK? Yeah, that's perfect. And there should be some slides as well. Yeah, which hopefully we have some screen. slides ready to go. So whenever you're ready, please do start. Good evening. Located in the wider grounds of the Grade 2 listed Morton House, the site is not in the open garden, but tucked into the corner of a modified area now used as a tennis court. The proposed dwelling is restricted to this area. The development would not harm the experience of Morton House due to screening, and it takes advantage of the terrace topography to ensure that Morton House remains the dominant element. Slide two, please. The nearby listed cottages would not be harmed. They're set to rise from their interrelationship with each other in the village, their gardens and roadside position, not the open landscape beyond or the gardens of Morton House. Whilst historically the settlement pattern was linear, it has evolved. In more recent properties are set back and the site does not project into the open space. The legibility of the settlement pattern will remain defined by the listed building and the development will not detract from this. Slide three, please. And the site cannot be experienced within the conservation area due to the existing built form and screening. Whilst views from the west are suggested to be affected, these are seasonal and restricted by vegetation. They also encompass a variety of built forms, including modern development and the modern rear extension of Morton House. The dwelling will be set down in the landscape lower than these existing buildings. This ensures it does not dominate its surroundings. Slide four, please. A conservation area is not about no change, but rather ensuring that development is respectful to its surroundings. The proposals take the opportunity to harmonise with Morton Rail through materials and design. I will now hand over to Jane. As you've just heard, we do not consider that any harm arises to heritage assets. Even if you consider that it does, then please remember that it's expressly provided for within policy that public benefits can override that harm. I will outline five public benefits of the development which weigh in favour in the overall planning balance, which we feel have been underweighted in the report. Firstly, a local market dwelling is proposed. Whilst there is no policy requirement to secure the property for local market needs, the applicants have chosen to do so and secure the property for local people in perpetuity. They are one of the identified needs in the housing needs survey. This benefit for the village in perpetuity should carry significant positive weight in the planning balance. Secondly, the dwelling would be a self-build. As the officer report says, this is a dwelling of a kind whose delivery is a national priority. Thirdly, the extensive renewables proposed, including ground source heating, solar panels, mechanical ventilation with heat recovery, rainwater harvesting and electric car charge points. This is all in the context of the Council's declared climate change emergency. Fourthly, fourthly, the removal of the existing garage from the setting of Wishingwell Cottage and its alternative provision creates significant highway and also heritage benefits. Fifthly, the garage removal opens up street scene views to the countryside beyond, which is a visual and heritage benefit. Although we consider no harm arises, I have set out five public benefits, which in my view outweigh the harm the planning officer has identified. I hope you agree. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much to you both. Uh, members, do we have any questions for um, our agent and or our heritage consultant? Please indicate in the chat if you do. Councillor Mills, please, first of all, yeah. Councillor Mills. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, Jane, could you, uh, it's good to hear from you, Jane. Jane, is can you put that photograph up for me again, please, that shows the modern houses? Is that from the 
rear of the property or rear of the garden that we're talking about? Um, so that's beyond the where the garden area would be. It's from the public footpath. Um, hopefully Louise might be able to bring it up on the location plan, but it's um, to the west. So, sorry, so that, would, sorry, I, I misunderstood. It, it, was that photograph taken from, as it is the back garden now where the tennis court is or from somewhere else? If I There's another the slides one. at the same time as you, but if we're talking about slide three, which that, um, we've just that's shown, it. that's from, a, yeah, so that's from a public footpath. Um, which is from the west of the property, quite a long way beyond the application site. Um, so you can see some modern development, Morton House, and then the site would be in the distance to the right. Louise might be able to show it on the location plan for you. Right. Okay. Now that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Uh, Councillor Curtis, next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Jane, I th think that near the end of your presentation, you said something like the removal of the garage would create, and I, I couldn't quite catch it, it was highways benefits or some other benefits. Could you just clarify what those benefits would actually be? Yes, of course. So, um, so I mentioned highway and heritage benefits. Thank you. In terms of the highway benefits, um, as you've probably seen from the photos, uh, the existing garage serving Wishing Well Cottage um, doesn't provide any turning space for vehicles parked there associated with um, with Wishing Well Cottage and as you've probably seen from the photos quite a lot of cars do park along the road in this area. The proposal would remove that garage and provide a new garage within the site which would allow for turning space allowing cars for Wishing Well Cottage plus the proposed dwelling to come into site, park safely, turn and then so enter and exit the highway in a forward gear. So that's the highway benefit. In terms of the heritage benefit, as you probably saw from the photo, it's quite a modern garage. It's not attractive. Uh, it's not good quality development in the setting of a listed building, and that would be removed. Oh, thank you very much for clarifying. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you both. And finally, Councillor Dixon, please. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Jane, your third bullet point, eco home. Um, obviously, we've got normal provisions regarding uh, water conservation, electrical vehicle charging points, etc. etc. What additionally was this home going to provide over and above what is our normal building requirements? So the the applicants have been heavily involved in the design of this property and they specifically want to create a highly energy efficient environmentally friendly home so um, my understanding is renewables are encouraged and electric car charge points are required obviously that's there but the additionals are so ground source heating pv panels which you can see on the back of the garage mechanical ventilation with heat recovery um, there's rainwater harvesting and there's a wall mounted battery backup to store the power that's generated. Um, I think that's a summary, but I'm not a renewable expert, I'll be honest, but that, that's what's proposed. Thank you, Jane. Marvellous, thank you very much. I can see no one else indicating their desire to uh, to ask you any questions at the moment. So uh, it leaves me to thank you both for your contributions this evening. If you want to continue to watch on the online stream or the live stream, you'd be best, best place to do that. But thank you for your contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, OK, we'll move to our final speaker of this item, who's Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry, you know the drill. It's five minutes with a 30 second warning. Questions afterwards. Whenever you're ready, fire away. Thank you, Chair. And firstly, the reason for supporting this application was to give a fair hearing to these proposals and the Parish Council was keen for the Planning Committee to be making the decision in this respect. As there were objections from two village households, Parish council councillors felt that it would not be appropriate to support the application irrespective of the local needs focus and so filed a response of no objection. It is noted that there are three different households objecting to this application, one of whom doesn't live in the village but in Ashhorn. There is also support from the residents at Wishing Well Cottage and a comment of no objection registered by the immediate neighbour to Morton House. So this is a finely balanced application. I can confirm that myself and members of the Parish Council have visited both the applicant site and the site of the main objector in order to be fully inclusive. During the visit to Glencoe Cottage, 
It was noted there are no unobscured windows which directly overlook the site. However, due to the size of the proposed three bedroom dwelling, it was evident that the occupants would lose their unrestricted countrywide, countryside views from their garden, which we all we, which we all recognise in terms of the high personal value to the occupants. But unfortunately, loss of view is not a planning reason for objection. Morton Morrill is a category four local service village in which a minimum of 32 new dwellings should be accommodated during the plan period of 2011 to 2031. To date, less than 10 properties have either been built or currently have planning permission granted, which highlights a shortfall. The applicants have been residents in the village for over 40 years and their site falls within the built up area boundary and is in response to the local housing needs survey undertaken in March 2020, which highlighted the need for the three bedroom dwellings. The site falls within the physical confines of Morton Morrill and therefore satisfies both CS15 and AS10 policies. In addition, there is no objection from Warwickshire Highways regarding the new access. The key issue for the, key, for the case officer's conclusion is the impact on the Grade 2 listed Morton House and nearby listed co cottages. However, it is noted in the Conservation Officer's report that, we'll, that there would be some benefit to the immediate setting of Wishingwell Cottage by removing the large modern garage, although the report goes on to say this would be offset by the impacts of the new developments to the rear. However, the removal of the modern garage would open up hidden countryside views in the centre of the village and provide additional garaging and parking for Wishingwell Cottage. Whilst the frontage of Morton House is unaffected by the proposed new development, the rear of the property can be seen from the public footpath set on much lower ground some 200 yards away behind a mature hedgerow and trees. So it's a matter of assessing the level of harm that would be caused to the designated heritage assets and I therefore leave it up to committee members to consider that level of harm and whether this outweighs the proposal for a new dwelling in the village. Thank you. Councillor Barry, thank you very much for that. Members, do we have any questions for our ward member? Please indicate in the chat if you do. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do so. Although I sense there's no one moving, so there may not be any questions. Ah, Councillor Jennings, please. Councillor Jennings. Thanks, Jim. Um, have any other houses been built back um, away from the, the road um, in the village? Not to my knowledge, um, Matt, um, but obviously the current development is enclosed within the built up area boundary. And have they identified any areas for the, the missing 20 odd houses? Uh, there are uh, three sites that are currently included in the site allocation plan. One is further down in the village um, and then there are two sites down Brook Lane, which sort of runs down not far from Morton House, but, but further down Brook Lane and right on the outskirts um, of the village, but, but going going back that way but there has been quite a bit of development um, to Morton Manor um, which is kind of in line with the proposed new development. Thank you very much. Okay uh, there are no other members indicating a desire to uh, to ask you a question at the moment councillor so thank you very much for uh, for your speech. Obviously, you can stay on and continue to watch us deliberate as we go through. OK, uh, we will move to questions for our officer. Uh, could you please indicate members in the chat if you have a question uh, to Louise about this item? I will give you a couple of seconds in which to type. Looks like that's a no. Hopefully someone's already typed a desire to speak for debate. Councillor Jennings, come in now, please. Councillor Jennings. Sorry, that was it was going to be a question. That's fine. Um, yeah, it was just about uh, the harm to the heritage assets. Um, 
and the sort of architecture in if this had been a um, a Victorian looking house or a Tudorish looking house, would would this be more acceptable? Thank you for the question. Um, whilst the design has been um, picked upon in the report and mentioned the refusal reason, the main concern really is the, the, the development of currently undeveloped land to the rear of the grade two listed buildings um, and the harm that would occur through introducing a new dwelling in this area, which would effectively divorce the cottages um, along the high street from the open countryside, which contribute to their setting, along with uh, the setting of the listed buildings such as Glencoe Cottage. Um, so, so yeah, it's not just the design, it is the siting of the development in this location. You can see from the aerial imagery I've got here that specifically to the left hand side of the main road, the development is, you know, very shallow plots, um, close knit. There's no other examples of development extending this far out into the countryside. So it would be the harm that would occur through, like I said, the introduction of this development in this area. So answer the question. Thank you very much. Lovely. Well done. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Councillor Curtis, you indicated you wish to speak. Is that in the debate? Uh, uh, yes, are we in the debate yet? I'm, I'm sorry. Joe. I think we can move into the debate now. Yes. Um, away. It's a relatively minor point, but um, Councillor Parry, who I see, seems to be very neutral on this in Venice, um, talked about the removal of the garage. The garage would open up countryside views as being an advantage, but it's also been said that this house would block views from the adjoining properties. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how those two sit beside each other. If, if the, the, those houses are going to have their views of the open countryside blocked, I'm not sure you'll be able to see those views by removing the garage from the road. OK, thank you for that. Um, Councillor Mills is next registered to speak. <coughs> Councillor Mills. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, um, yes, I know this um, is site quite well. Um, I know where the garage is. Um, to be honest, Mr. Chairman, I, I can't see anything pleasing about this. It's on undeveloped land. The, the building itself, it doesn't fit in. Um, it, it's just, there isn't anything else developed along there. Um, I, I just can't see anything pleasing about it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is that um, a, a proposal to refuse in line with the officer's recommendation? Yes, 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 I think I could, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Good man. Thank you very much. Councillor Jennings next, please. My view is slightly different. I actually, um, I don't have a problem with modern design at all. I think it fits in very well with um, old designs, I don't like fake Victorian, fake Tudor, fake 50s, fake 70s. You know, if you're building a house, make it is, it's a modern house. Um, I like, I love modern architecture and I think it can blend in and fit in with old, older buildings very well. As in, you just got to watch grand designs and, and you see how, how you can incorporate a modern building into a castle. So and it just takes a bit of imagination and I, I like this. Um, so those are, my, those are my initial thoughts at the moment. I mean, but I appreciate it's not all design, it's, it's the sitting. So um, I'm deliberating. OK, thank you very much, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Dixon next, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I will uh, second Councillor Mills's proposal to, uh, re to refuse this one. It is backland development. Um, there is a place uh, for Councillor Jennings for, for modern development and modern architecture, uh, but it's not in uh, this location, to my mind, in any way, shape or form. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Dixon. That was to the point. Uh, Councillor Eden, next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I, I kind of sit on the fence a little bit um, like Councillor Parry in as much as I think the design of it's beautiful, but uh, I do have to come down, I think, on the side of um, Councillor Mills's original proposal in terms of where it is, just isn't quite right for me. So I'm very much in line with the officer's report, I think. 
Marvellous, thank you very much. I can see Councillor Curtis has desire to second Councillor Mills's proposal. That has already been done, but Councillor Curtis, if you want to speak further, you're welcome to. Don't feel obliged. Was that a no? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Yes, that's a no. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> uh, OK, I think everyone's pretty much covered the points we need to cover so far. So uh, we do have a proposal uh, from Councillor Mills to refuse in line with the officer's recommendation that has been seconded by Councillor Dixon. And for exactly the reasons that they've expressed, I shall go first and say Councillor Richards four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor Fleming four. Thank you, Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Councillor Curtis, four. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Dixon, four. Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, four. Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, controversially against. Uh, and Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, four was one against. Chairman. Lovely, thank you very much. And so committee therefore resolves to refuse application 202853FUL. That is Morton House and Wishing Well Cottage in Morton Morrill uh, in line with the officer's recommendation. OK, let's move to our final uh, application of the evening, uh, which is uh, 203510FUL. That is Olive Cottage in Hockley Heath. Our presenting officer is Sarah McPherson. Sarah, are you there? I am Chair, can you hear me and see my presentation? I can hear you and I can see your presentation. Whenever you're ready, do feel free to go. Perfect. This application is for dismantling and reconstruction of gate pillars and replacement of gate to create a vehicular entrance, the installation of a detached garage. The site is identified here by the black dot outside of Hockley Heath. The red line here indicates the site. You can see that the host dwelling is Grade 2 listed. The pink line shows the boundary with Warwick and the green lines of footpaths. The site is located within the West Midlands Green Belt. This proposed site plan shows the layout of the proposed new garage and widened access way. The driveway does not need planning permission. Members will recall this application from the committee on the 2nd of, De of, 2nd of December, sorry, which was broadly the same, except that the previous application also included a greenhouse, which has now been omitted. This plan shows the elevations from the road proposed above and existing below. This plan shows the proposed garage. This plan shows the proposed gates, which would reconstruct the existing brick piers. These photos show the garden from various angles. And this photo shows the existing parking situation and street frontage. Officers consider that the new outbuilding would not fall within any of the exceptions to permit new buildings in the Greenbelt and is therefore considered to be inappropriate development with no very special circumstances to outweigh the harm. In addition, the garage and hard standing is considered to have a detrimental effect on the character of the open and green landscape by reason of scale and siting. And there are no updates, Chair. Thank you. Sarah, thank you very much. Um, we will move to our first speaker, who is uh, Councillor Tony Dixon, who is speaking on behalf of Tamworth and Arden Parish Council in support. Councillor Dixon, you are here. I can see you. Um, you have three minutes with a 30 second warning. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh... Is it just me or has Councillor Dixon frozen for everybody else? Frozen for me as well. Yeah. He has. He's frozen. Oh dear, oh dear. Wow. Um, given Councillor Dixon is also speaking uh, as ward member, we probably need to try and get him reconnected. Um, if we could take a minute adjournment while we try and reconnect Councillor Dixon, uh, if it's all possible. Um, could someone please place the adjournment sign on? the screen for us, please. Marvellous. So we'll take uh, a couple of minutes there while uh, while we reconnect with Councillor Dixon. Uh, and if we haven't been able to at that point, we will uh, we will call in our next speakers. Just two minutes.
Sorry, Chairman, can you hear me now by any chance? Councillor oh. Dixon, welcome back. We don't know what happened. Uh, you started and then you immediately oh. cut out. I'm going to say, uh, we, we will reconvene the meeting now. I can see members are here, so uh, we will reconvene. Uh, we'll start the timer from scratch, and I'm assuming you're going to do the same. So three minutes, we'll give you a 30 second warning. When you're ready, please do start. Thank you, Chairman. I'm just trying to bring back on my phone the wording of, ah, here we are, right. Uh, the Parish Council's comments. There is one additional point that I would like to make the only reason that the applicant needs planning permission for the garage is because Olive Cottage is a listed building. Were it not so, the applicant could take advantage of the usual permitted development rights. The need for planning permission is to ensure that a designated heritage asset is protected. The District Council's conservation experts are satisfied and it seems unfair that the officers are raising objections on Greenbelt grounds when ordinarily such considerations would play no part. It is even more unfair when the Greenbelt concern is at best marginal because the site is not prominent and flanked on the one side by a motorway and on the other by a busy main road, the A3400. Those are the Parish Council's comments. Thank you, Chairman. I can't answer questions on behalf of the Parish Council, but I will obviously take them from members after my own five minute spell. Thank you, Chairman. OK, no problem. Thank you very much, Councillor Dixon. We will move then to our next speaker in that case, who is uh, Ms. Carol Brandt, the applicant. Ms. Brandt, are you there? You may need to press star and six to unmute yourself. <clears throat> Ms. Brandt, hopefully you can hear me. Star and six will unmute your keypad or your phone. Hello, can you hear me? I can indeed. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, Hello, so, Ms. Brandt, Ms. Brandt, you have three minutes. Uh, we'll give you a 30 second warning, but otherwise, whenever you're ready, do feel free to start. We do have some photos in front of us as well. So whenever yeah, you're ready, feel a, free to start. A slide. OK, yeah. thank you. All parking arrangements are dangerous and unsightly. Parking our cars within the site is the only viable option. The plan states our proposal significantly harm the character of the area. We disagree. How can this view be preferable? How can safety and security not be deemed special circumstances? Next slide. The plan states the double garage to provide safer parking and storage facilities for our cars, possessions and tools is inappropriate. The planning dean spectators have already ruled that this type of double garage on garden land in green belt is of modest scale. Therefore, the effect on openness is minimal, development is not inappropriate, does not conflict with national guidance and can be approved under existing guidelines. The planner infers limited infilling cannot introduce bill form where there is none. Core strategy 10C states subject to it not having a materially greater impact. The garage takes up less than 1% of the whole site. Permitted developments allow 50% of the site to be covered without buildings. The planning inspectorate have already ruled that much larger developments than ours can be classed as limited infilling. Next slide. Plumber states the garage must be within five metres of the cottage. That would be detrimental to the cottage, involve the removal of established trees and building the garage on the slope. Stratford's core strategy actually states the word should, not must, which is presumably how this larger garage was approved, 33 metres away from its listed property. Next slide. The planner states our proposals are detrimental to the Arden SLA. Yet last year, five double garages, including this one, were approved under PD and full plans within the same SLA. CF12 DMC3 states that developments which enhance the wider area can be deemed appropriate. Our neighbours would be delighted if our cars were removed from the highway. It would also improve safety for all road users. Next slide. No mention is made of core strategy 8C. Integrating new developments into historic assets will be encouraged to secure their viability. Also, no mention is made of our residential amenity. The Building for Life 12 initiative endorsed by Stratford states good design includes external secure storage for garden equipment and cycles within garages or traditional outbuildings. Would any of you be prepared to live with a lawnmower in your lounge, a swimmer in the dining room, bikes in bedrooms, ladders in the bathroom? How is this not a special circumstance in its own right? Next slide. 
30 seconds. Anna dismisses the fact that title deeds show a substantial outbuilding previously occupied the site. MCPF 145G allows for the partial or complete redevelopment of previously developed land. Title deeds are legal documents which prove the land was previously developed. Cars parked in the open and addresses security concerns in accordance with CS 9B.7. The previous application was refused because it included a greenhouse. Therefore, hope you can support this application. Thank you. Ms Brandt, thank you very much for that. Um, you did go slightly distant towards the end, but I think I got uh, I got everything from you. Um, if you could just bear with us while I see if members have any questions for you. Members, if you could please indicate in the chat if you have any questions for Ms Brandt, Mrs Brandt, so I should say. Please indicate in the chat if you do. I'm not seeing much movement. Ah, Councillor Mills, please. Councillor Mills. Thank you, thanks, Mr. Um, good evening. Um, you you show the three cars uh, on the on the front of your um, property there. Are they always parked there? Well, other, other than when we go to work, <laughs> although we're not so, doing much of that at the moment. So that's your normal parking place. That's our to... only parking spaces. And they they're all your three cars there, yes? Yeah, I mean my husband's is a white car, mine's the yellow, and the daughter she's got a different car now. She's got a, a mini. Oh. Good stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Marvellous. Thank you very much. I can see no one else has indicated their desire to ask a question. So, Ms. Brandt, thank you very much for your contribution this evening. You're probably best placed to continue watching the live stream uh, on your uh, one of your devices and you can hang up okay. your phone now. But thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Cheers. OK, our final speaker for this evening then is Councillor Dixon, who has five minutes with a 30 second warning. Uh, Councillor Dixon, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Chairman. Members know that we have been here before. Last time, you were supportive of an outbuilding to provide both storage for bicycles, lawnmowers, gardening kit, as well as the garage for cars. But you refused the application, mostly because members considered a 20 foot by 10 foot greenhouse was too large. That aspect has been removed, but the planners are still on the horns of the dilemma. Policy, policy requires any new building in the green belt to either fall within a limited list of exceptions or to have very special circumstances. If planners conclude in their opinion that there is no very special circumstances, they are obliged to recommend refusal on principle and not consider what may be a fair appraisal of the individual circumstances. They are fearful of setting precedent which is itself is something we are told does not exist in planning terms. But even if it did, how many listed buildings in our green belt are members aware of which have no means of outside storage for lawnmowers, bicycles, etc.? The results of such a restricted interpretation of policy requires that they make such recommendations as I hear before you this evening. As an example, if this was an application for a pergola supporting roses, it too would be described as a building and therefore inappropriate in the green belt by definition, would have to be recommended for refusal as being outside of policy. This is where planning committees are empowered to exercise their judgment and avoid the need for such cases to go before a planning appeal inspector. This applicant has been trying for very nearly a year to achieve a reasonable outcome to the problems encountered at a home for the sole reason that the property is a listed building and therefore has no permitted development rights. The only reason for this planning legislation is to safeguard a listed building and for no other reason. The planners do not consider that the construction of this garage store has any detrimental impact upon the listed building as such if the property was not listed, the garage would have been built 12 or more months ago and being well enclosed by trees, etc., would have gone unnoticed, having no impact upon the openness of the greenbelt. The last time members were also trying to find planning references to justify overturning the officer's recommendation. 
I strongly suggest that you do not need to find any such different reasons. You simply need to give less weight to the planner's contention that the building harms the openness of the greenbelt. The only reason the planners give is it is contrary to the to our SDC policy, which states that any building in the greenbelt by definition will harm the openness. Members, you have the right to disagree with the assessment made by the planner and to grant permission. I strongly suggest that you do so. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, do we have any questions for our ward member, please? If we do, please indicate in the chat. I can see at least three heads saying no. Give it a couple of seconds for those people I can't see. No, OK, marvellous. In that case, Councillor Dixon, thank you very much. We will move on to points of clarification. Do we have any Thanks. points for clarifying? I can see Councillor Parry has asked for a question. Councillor Parry, I don't know whether that came before or after I moved on. So if it's a question for Councillor Dixon, fire away. If it, it's a question for the officers, go and go ahead and ask the officers. Sorry, um, Chair, I was a bit late in coming to it and then I got, you know, it, there is a delay on the system. Um, Councillor Dixon, um, can you just remind me, I can remember this application coming forward. Was this within this site, was there previously um, a building in this site that that had been demolished a while ago? I seem to remember, I just wanted confirmation or, or has there never ever been a building within this site that was was demolished some some time ago. Something is just sort of spinning yes. down in my head. I, 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 can, I think I can clarify for you, Councillor Barry. Um, towards the end of Mrs Brandt's presentation, she showed a plan and I think there's probably a small circle indicating the location of the said building. Um, the building is in accordance with the planner's report uh, was removed uh, some time ago. I don't know when. I don't think Mrs Brandt can be certain when that uh, building was demolished. However, uh, essentially, I would guess, and it would be no more than a guess, Councillor Parry, um, back in the 1980s, uh, the house, which was a tiny cottage then, was extended. Um, and it may well be that the uh, resources of that disused building were used to create the potential brickwork of old uh, materials, etc., and may have been incorporated into the building. The lit building wasn't, wasn't a listed building then, it wasn't listed no. until 2000. But what I'm trying to just get my head around the fact that there was previously, there is history of a another building not that far from the host dwelling that is and, correct. Not, and not far from the proposed site for this new garage. That there was indeed, but nobody can actually give a date when it was demolished. That's fine, no thank you. Thank you very much. OK, um, Councillor Fleming, please. Yeah, I, I remember this application quite well. And um, I think the problem last time was 80% of the conversation was directed at the greenhouse. Um, very little was talked about the store and, and the hard standing. And uh, the greenhouse seemed to be the thing that everybody was was tripping over um, and, and saying that it shouldn't be, uh, it, you know, it, the permission shouldn't be given. Well, now that that greenhouse is gone, I think 80% of the argument against this, uh, this application has disappeared in one foul swoop. And uh, I think purely from a, in, in my personal opinion, uh, having three cars parked out on the road to having them not parked there that is an improvement to the street scene and the uh, and the green belt sort of visual sort of vista as you drive by. Um, and the other thing as well is that this uh, this building seems to be behind a very high and fairly dense hedge. Um, so again, wouldn't affect the street scene in a in an adverse way. Um, so from my perspective, I, I would find. Uh, great difficulty in uh, in agreeing to refuse this permission, but I'm thinking about it just as things go at the moment. Thank you. Lovely, Councillor Fleming. Thank you very much. I'm going to assume that no members have any points of clarification. We are now in debate, um, so we will continue on that basis. 
but if we need to, we can always ask officers questions. Uh, Councillor Mills next, please. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I actually, I'll probably agree with everything Bill says there. I mean, they they seem to have, um, uh, the applicants got rid of that greenhouse, which is a moment most of the bone of contention last time around. To get rid of those cars off the front it is a must. Um, it, it probably spoils the area. So, I, I, unfortunately, I will go against the office uh, recommendations this one, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Mills. Councillor Jennings, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I mentioned last time I remember this one very well. I drive past it all the time and uh, I know it's, it's, a, it's a terrible road hazard where the cars are, where the cars are parked. Um, the big bone of contention last last time was the greenhouse and I remember we discussed limited that limited infill is acceptable in the green belt. If it's if it's limited, I mean, in, in this case, it looks very, very moderate, modest. The fact that there was previous a previous building there as well. Um, I'm, I'm very much um, feeling that I'll be going against the office's decision on this one. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. I think this is a case of common sense prevails, to be quite honest. Um, I actually think the removal of the cars from the frontage would actually enhance the setting of the grade two listed cottage significantly um, and it would also provide improved security um, and I think you know um, I'm not sure whether we've had a proposal we've had some people that are happy to say they go against the officer's uh, recommendation but if we haven't had a proposal I'm happy to propose um, grant that we grant application. Marvellous, thank you very much. I can see lots of people seconding, Councillor Ed and Councillor Kendall, Councillor Mills. Um, we do of course have to make sure that our reasons, excuse me, to go against, particularly because this is a Greenbelt site, are sound and robust um, uh, and I just want to flesh those out now. My uh, suggestion and my feel would be that um, the committee considers that uh, the site does benefit from uh, the exceptions in the uh, the Greenbelt uh, by virtue of the fact that either it's considered limited in fill or uh, it's considered to be a brownfield site by virtue of the fact that there is evidence of a previous building on the site. Um, if those aren't considered to be appropriate uh, or if members are, don't consider those to be um, uh, correct, then we have the other position of special circumstances uh, for Greenbelt um, uh, developments. And I would suggest those to be uh, the safety aspect, highway safety, by virtue of the fact that you are bringing cars off um, the uh, the frontage. They don't have to reverse either on or off of the highway and also the um, the safety and security in terms of safe storage and a place away from uh, the road. Um, those would be that would be my sort of uh, way of around going uh, going about things. Um, the other reason for um, refusal was the by virtue of its scale and sighting would have a detrimental impact on the character of the openness of the uh, landscape. Um, again, same, I think the same reasons that we've expressed or could express for the Greenbelt apply. Councillor Parry, are you happy with that summation? Thumbs are up, both thumbs are up, so I must have done a reasonably good job. I will second that formally, um, uh, in which case um, we need to now speak to our officers and confirm A, that they have noted down everything that I've just said and B, uh, do we need to add any conditions or are you happy to just add the standard conditions for the wording of which can be agreed outside of this meeting? That is a question to officers. Uh, thanks for that, Chair. So um, with the overcoming the green belt reason for refusal, um, do I take it that you consider it limited infilling, which is therefore considered to have um, a sorry, it is limited infilling, um, which is not inappropriate, subject to it not having a materially greater impact on the openness of the green belt because it is a new building where there currently isn't one. Um, I think you would conclude that it does have a materially greater impact, but that that could be overcome by the very special circumstances of uh, reducing parking on the highway, uh, safety and security, as you've mentioned. Yeah, I'm happy um, with that. Um, if we can include in that special circumstances, the fact that there is evidence of a previous building on site, I think it's important that that is formalised. 
So in very special circumstances, that would be highways, highway safety, security and previous building. Yeah, so you've got highway safety, previous uh, security on the site, safety and security on the site, and then the um, the previous build, evidence of previous building. OK, yeah, got that. I'm, I'm happy with that uh, all in. Um, standard conditions you're happy with? Um, on the previous application, um, the conservation officer recommended specific conditions for the garage requiring elevational drawings and large scale details of eaves and verges, doors yeah. and windows um, and material samples. Happy with that. Uh, EV points. Uh, the development would be conditioned to be in accordance with the climate change checklist. Perfect. OK, in that case, I think we've got everything covered. Um, uh, Councillor Parry, you're happy? I'm happy as a seconder. OK, good. Let's move to a vote. Councillor Richards, four. Thank you, Councillor Fleming. Councillor Fleming, four. Thank you, Councillor Kendall. Councillor Kendall, four. Councillor Curtis. Councillor Curtis, four. Thank you, Councillor Eden. Councillor Eden, four. Thank you, Councillor Jennings. Councillor Jennings, four. Thank you, Councillor Mills. Councillor Mills, four. Thank you, and Councillor Parry. Councillor Parry, four. Unanimous chairman. Marvellous, thank you very much, Anne. Um, and members therefore have resolved to grant application 203510 FUL as Olive Cottage in Hockley Heath for the reasons we have given. Uh, there being no urgent business, um, I can uh, thank all of our officers, all of our members and all of those that have contributed this evening uh, for a uh, terrific debate and discussion. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I will declare the meeting closed. Well done, Mr Chairman. Thank you.